A few years ago, I had a friend named Bella who was suffering from depression. The problem was no one knew about it, except for her closest friends. In hindsight, we should have said something. We should have known better, but we didn't, and neither did Bella. Bella was too afraid to tell anyone. She was scared of being labeled crazy or attention-seeking. So no one knew until one day, Bella tried to kill herself. Hearing what she had done was the most frightening moment of my life. Luckily, Bella lived and was able to receive help and treatment. However, every day, I wonder what might have happened had she not been so lucky. Every day, people aren't so lucky. According to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, 112 Americans commit suicide every day. According to research done by the University of Rochester School of Medicine, 90% of people who commit suicide have a diagnosable mental illness. So why aren't these people getting help? Or if they are, why isn't it enough? Many people don't get help for the same reason Bella didn't. They don't want to be crazy. Mental illness in America is surrounded by stigma, which prevents mentally ill people from getting the help they need. In order to combat the stigma, we must understand where and how the stigma incubates and analyze how the social disease affects its victims so that we may cure the social virus and heal the lives of those who have been affected by the struggles of living with a mental illness. Mental illness is defined as a set of disorders including bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and depression which affect an individual's thought processes and behavior. The stigma surrounding mental illness does not just affect mentally ill people. It affects all of us. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, one in four Americans have a diagnosable mental disorder. So the odds are almost everyone here knows someone with a mental illness, even if you don't realize that you do. Much of this blindness can be attributed to the media's misportrayals of those with mental illnesses. In the media, people with mental illnesses are portrayed as violent, lazy, incompetent, and unpredictable. Dr. Patricia R. Owen did a review of 41 movies with schizophrenic main characters and found that one-third of these characters engaged in homicidal behavior. In reality, only 3 to 5 percent of violent crime is committed by people with serious mental illnesses. And people with serious mental illnesses are more than 10 times more likely to be the victims of violent crime than the general population. This misportrayal is, is not just limited to fictional media. Even in the news, when a mentally ill person commits a crime, it is sensationalized. And the person with the mental illness is portrayed as violent and even animalistic. The US Supreme Court endorsed prohibiting the ownership of guns by felons and the mentally ill. And it seems the only time politicians talk about mental illness is in relation to gun violence. When mentally ill people are not portrayed as violent, their symptoms are usually downplayed, like in the movie As Good As It Gets, where the main character's OCD disappeared after he found love. This is highly damaging to both mentally ill people and their loved ones. Love, no matter how strong, cannot cure a mental illness. All these portrayals are unfair to mentally ill people who see them and end up feeling ostracized and alone. They are also unfair to those without mental illnesses who see these portrayals and end up with a biased and confusing perspective of what mental health really is. However, the factor that contributes most to the stigma surrounding mental illness is our perception. For, for the most part, much of the reason many people do not get help for their mental illnesses is because they and the people around them do not know enough about mental illness to identify it as what it is. For example, when a portion of the Australian public was shown vignettes of people suffering from depression and schizophrenia, only 39% could correctly identify depression, and only 27% could correctly identify schizophrenia. Some of the effects of the stigma surrounding mental health are discrimination in housing, education, and in the workplace, and social ostracization. The stigma surrounding mental illness leads to a problem where mentally ill people do, 
are not receiving the help they need. And therefore, their illnesses continue to get worse, leading to an epidemic of mental illness in America. In order to combat the stigma surrounding mental health, there are many things that have to be done. First, we need to educate the public. There are already many organizations in place to educate the public, such as stigma busters, open the doors, and bring change to mind. However, these organizations need funding and support. They educate and engage the public and encourage people to break down stigma wherever they see it. There also need to be more positive portrayals of people with mental illnesses in the media. If we see more positive portrayals of mental illness, mental illness will gradually become more accepted. Finally, we need to elevate the voices of people with mental illnesses. Research has shown that the more exposure someone has to those with mental illnesses, the less likely they will be to endorse or support stigma. We need to understand that everyone's needs are different. However, some people might argue that the media is not responsible for the negative portrayals of those with mental illnesses because the media's purpose is entertainment and not education. Some would even say that this is just, some would even say that this is just so, that this is just political correctness gone too far. However, although the media's portrayals of those with mental illnesses are often innocently intentioned, they can have malicious effects. The average American spends four hours watching TV every day and another five hours on his or her phone. So it makes sense that that we get most of our information about mental illness through the media. Furthermore, humans are very good at remembering information, but not very good at remembering its source. So when we are watching something we know is fictional, we may still accept its details as fact. Children are often first exposed to the concept of mental illness through the media, usually in relation to horror movies or criminal behavior. This first impression is a lasting one and will often stay with these children for the rest of their lives, affecting the way they view mental illness. The media needs to accept responsibility for the negative portrayals of people with mental illnesses and begin to portray mental illness accurately, even if it means sacrificing entertainment. Overall, we have to deconstruct the stigma surrounding mental health. There are many ways to do that just in your day-to-day -day life. First. Educate yourself. Maybe you have some misconceptions about mental illness that you've never thought about until now. Maybe someone you know has a mental illness, but you're not really sure what it means or how it affects their lives. Look up information and ask questions. Second, talk about mental health. Many people are afraid to talk about mental health, so they do not share their experiences or learn new information. Show the people around you that it is okay to discuss mental health. Third, and, and lastly, I've mentioned earlier that almost all of us know someone with a mental illness. Try, listen, to, listen to them and try to understand what they're going through. If someone had talked to Bella and tried to understand her, maybe she would not have tried to kill herself. By doing little things every day, you can save lives and finally end the stigma surrounding mental health.